Imagine your body's a community, and your cells are, are the people who live there. The, the dream of every cell is to be immortal, to make endless copies of itself. But the community can only use so many liver cells, <laughs> and no more than two eyes, so your cells need to cooperate, send signals to each other. Yes, it's your turn to divide, or uh, no, please wait in line. Actually, it's a lot like this town meeting I went to where everyone had an opinion, they're all talking at once, but what makes this really confusing is you've got 10 billion cells, so the meeting feels more like China with no one in charge. <laughs> but it all works out in the end. Everyone gives a little, gets a little, because that's what a community is. Except every now and then, you get a bad apple. The kind of cell that just won't listen to no. He, he never used to be a problem, but then he mutated into a cancer cell, pumping out copies who also keep pumping out copies, a virtual riot of malignant, unstoppable vanity, until the day comes you notice they've driven out all of the decent folk and taken over the town. Everything we've tried, surgery, chemo, comes at a terrible cost. So it occurred to me, what if instead of attacking the cancer directly, I could turn it against itself? This was three years ago, and you can't imagine how uh, difficult technically, but I just finished running a set of experiments, and now remember, everything I've done so far has just been in a petri dish, nothing on actual mice, let alone, and again, this is only the first set of experiments, so this is completely premature, but I think I may have figured out how to cure cancer. How am I doing on time? <laughs> I had to grab my head to make sure it didn't explode. And then I threw open the window and started shouting how everyone else in tumor research should just pack up their things and go. <laughs> if I'm talking too much, you'd let me know, because I'm a little nervous. If you wouldn't just look at your watch, you'd let me know. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Please, all I want is a broken chair in his lab this summer. Yes, I really need the challenge. I'm sorry, but I have nothing here from you. Now, my secretary said I would meet you today. Huh? Naturally, I was grateful. Here, I've got another. And you're sure it was her? The important thing is, I'm here and we're meeting. Miss Carrington, do I look like someone who can't think of ways to fill his time? You have no appointment. There was never a transcript. I'm guessing you called, or my secretary. Uh, actually, no, I didn't please call. don't defend yourself. In fact, try not to speak at all. You're like a thousand poodles barking at once. <laughs> we don't take summer students here. We found they were often in love with themselves for no apparent reason. They made snide remarks about people over 50. <laughs> as though being young and irritating was somehow an end in itself. Now, I am looking at my watch, and I see that it's new. Then, if it's okay, I'd like to take you to lunch. No need. We understand each other. I have to do this. A very wealthy man used to say, never get too close to one idea. He was Sephardic. Came over the diaspora, came over the diaspora on a camel. So please, this is a copy of my new budget. the board will approve this arrogant... I can assure you they agonized before doing just that ten minutes ago. I understand your disappointment, so really I do. So if you wouldn't think of you as disloyal, if you were to consider other offers that might come along. I'm 67 years old. My wife and I are very comfortable here. I seem to remember you've got a daughter in Dallas. Her husband works for Raytheon. Maybe you can find something closer. Get to see more of your grandchildren. You know, now that I'm looking more closely at these, did I say I, I couldn't live with this? Man can't get to be 67, he doesn't believe flexible is a virtue. The thing is, Saul, it isn't just money for your projects. I'm cutting salaries, too. Well, then, I'm...